Hello YouTube. Recently I decided to pick up a new hobby. Uh, I watched a TED talk called How to Write an Award-Winning First Novel by Nathan Filer. Um, I was looking for stuff about positive thinking and how it can help you achieve your goals. And I really liked this. I didn't enter it with the specific intention of trying to start writing, but once I watched him talk about it, I felt compelled to sit in front of my computer and do it for a little while. And I like it. I recently, in the last two years, I started drawing and painting, which is something I never thought I would enjoy. And writing feels kind of the same way. I'm starting to do it as a hobby, and I think I might try to write a novel, which is a big endeavor, right? But I've always been fascinated by the idea of NaNoWriMo. I know it's not November, but... I mean, any month can be novel writing month. It just doesn't have to be national, I suppose. Um, the specific TED Talk, I'll link it in the description below, but it's really nice because it's a seven-step guide um, to achieving goals that you might have, and it's framed around the idea of writing. So he starts with having specific goals, and specificity is really, I think, key to his method of thinking. Um, he cites, I will write something every day as an early goal that helped him achieve his first best-selling novel. And I think that that's a great one. I think if I really stick to this, that could be something I try, you know. He advised against setting a goal like, I will write a thousand words every day. Because he found that some days he wouldn't be able to do it because writing is hard. Um, he also talked about how a non-specific goal, something like, I want to be a writer, is something you might set out to do, but because there's no clear path to that, you'll end up beating yourself up in the end. Um, so I really like that. He also talked about making sure your goals are achievable, and I think that that's obviously really important. Um, I always pick up hobbies, and sometimes I'll be like, Oh, by next month, I'm going to be the most famous comedian in the entire world. And that's not realistic, right? You can't become the best at something overnight, you know? Especially with a new hobby. I mean, I'm not a writer. I'm an amateur writer. Or maybe worse, right? I might be less than amateur, right? I've sort of been... I've trained myself through school and college to kind of oppose writing in general. Um, it kind of makes me bristle up when I think about writing, you know, nonfiction. I have had fun so far um, with the little bit that I've done. Uh, then he talks about being prepared to fail. And again, I mean, I'm not a professional. I have very little experience, you know. If I dedicate time to this every day and we come out on the other side with a novel or even a short story, right? there's a greater chance that it's gonna suck than not. And that's something we have to live with because just achieving your goals can be enough, right? And even if you set out to start painting and you paint a picture, you can appreciate certain things, right? You can look at how you started and how you finished and see the difference between those two things. You can observe your own growth. Um, and he talks specifically about uh, appreciating small things in your writing. Like, he talks about the first time your main character sees the truth and maybe appreciating that. Or finding the bits of your novel that can stand up in any other novel or next to any other novel. And you'll probably have bits of, bits of that that surprise you. And, you know... I'm scared to share stuff that I write and I did share a little bit of it with my partner and she is an English major and she really actually responded very positively which made me feel very good because I never thought of myself as somebody who would be able to write. Um, and that's his next point. The next, uh, the fourth step of the seven steps is to base your affirmations on fact and those small victories are really where you can find real success, right? Because if you tell yourself, I've written a page, 
I am the greatest writer ever, move over Hemingway, you'll find yourself worn out fairly quickly because you're not going to be able to stand up with those people every single day, right? And by those people, I mean, you know, the greatest writers of all time. If you find yourself comparing yourself to John Steinbeck, uh, you might feel that way in a moment, but it won't last. I don't know if that's exactly how he wanted to give us that step, you know. I don't know if that's what he wanted us to get out of basing our affirmations on fact, but I think that's basically how I understood it. Um, his fifth step is be flexible in how you get there. And right now, I don't really know where there is, right? I, earlier I referred to what I'm working on as both a novel and a short story. Um, it might just be a way for me to waste a lot of time. But whatever I do, when I reach the end, I'm gonna be happy where I showed up. And I'm not gonna try to force anything, right? Uh, whatever happens, happens, you know? I decided to start this vlog because I wanted a little bit of accountability and sometimes it's nice to speak your goals out into the universe to sort of give it to the rest of the world and uh, I think YouTube definitely is the sort of void that'll take whatever you want to tell it you know it's a live diary um, the sixth step is to take responsibility um, that's something I struggle with a lot in general not just with writing I don't even know if I struggle with writing because I'm not a writer this is just a starting point for something that might be more fun in the end um, but what responsibility I can take is that I can learn from my past usually when I start a new hobby I'll pick it up for a few days I'll fail and then I'll drop off um, but I think if I really focus on this, it doesn't have to be like that. Obviously, we all have hobbies that we participate in every day and we enjoy them. And I think I would like this to be that because so often, maybe more often than not, it feels like I sit and I wish that I could just create something tangible, something that other people can see. And then I fail to do that. Um, so I'm going to take responsibility for whatever I produce. And that brings me to his seventh step, focusing on what you can control. Um, I can control whether or not I sit down to write every day. You know, I can't control other stuff. My car was totaled by a hailstorm probably a week and a half ago. And the insurance company, I'm not going to name names. The insurance company has taken a pretty long time to get it sorted out and we're losing a little bit of money every day on the rental car and it's been very frustrating and uh, I can't control the hail I'm not a weatherman uh, I also can't control how long it takes the giant corporation to get the money to us but I can control how I respond to it and whether or not I get frustrated or upset and to what degree and who I take it out on and what I take it out on and I think with a hobby, it's very similar, right? With something that takes a long time, like sculpting or drawing or writing, um, parts of it are gonna be a lot of fun and parts of it are gonna feel very inspired, but parts of it are not. Parts of it are gonna be hard work. And those are the things you sort of have to s sit down, address your emotional response to them, and then choose how to react because that's what you can control, right? Um, so. As long as I can sit down and write every day, I think I'm achieving that. Uh, Nathan Filer talks about how he keeps these short notes, this seven step guide posted above his desk. And I think that that would be a good idea for me just to remind me to keep at it. If I really do want to write a novel, you know, and I probably will not write a novel in a month, um, but maybe in a summer, you know, uh, I'm a numbers guy, so I looked up the word count of Brave New World because that's a short to medium length novel, I think. Uh, and it's got 68,000 words, which means if I write 
600 words every day. I'll have 60,000 words by the end of the summer, and I'll be just short of Brave New World. And I think that if I can even try to approach Aldous Huxley in length, I'll be pretty satisfied with my first novel. The content of it might suck, but at least it'll be a lot of suck. Thanks for listening to me ramble for a little while. Um, again, I think I'm doing this blog mostly for myself, mostly to organize my, my thoughts and see how I'm feeling. That's why it's unedited and sort of impromptu. You know, maybe it's also just to like make myself feel better. You know, I'm sort of just reveling in the idea of being a blogger, whatever that means. Maybe it's a second hobby that I'm picking up. Maybe it's more a video about my new hobby of vlogging. I don't know. But thanks for tuning in. I hope you have a fantastic day.